So if you're from out west, you already know who this guy is, man. Shaky Sean, the prince of the Four Corner Hustlers, one of the Four Corner Hustler leaders. Uh, if you had seen last year on my old channel, I was doing a lot of videos about a uh, Four Corner Hustler boss named Broman, who um, he is locked up now, and uh, his trial concluded already last year. But uh, that was a big case, a, a very big case that uh, you know involved a lot of work with the feds and everything. This guy, Shaky Sean, he's he's very well known too, man. And the Four Corner Hustlers is one of the deepest gangs on the west side of Chicago. And it's known as a predominantly west side gang, although they, they do have spots up north and out south. And uh, I think over east too. Uh, I think over east they got some spots too. I don't know too much about their situation over the east though, man. But um, this guy though now, man, he uh, he's going away for at least 10 years. Um, and uh, so... Uh, several years ago, he, he was charged, and he's been in the system before. He was being wiretapped. Uh, they had the technology listening in on everything that he was saying, man. So uh, they got a lot of evidence against him. But Shaky Sean is a very well-known guy on the West Side. And he, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison a couple of weeks ago for distributing wholesale quantities of heroin on the West Side. Now, he's got another sentencing date coming up. And uh, just the question that I wanted to pose is, is this the end for him? He's 56. He's, he's actually, um, I guess, from the suburbs, but he also received eight years of supervised release after he pled guilty to one kind of conspiracy to distribute heroin back in January, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. So he pled guilty. And uh, they said he's the so-called prince of the Four Corner Hustlers gang, but the foes have a lot of uh, different factions now. And uh, he was the subject of a multi-year investigation. It also led to the arrest of two fellow gang members. So on eight occasions between December of 2018 and March of 2019, Shaky Sean or one of his co-conspirators distributed 136.4 grams of heroin. So they, they had these guys in the bag. And, um, you know, his name was so big, like, like Shaky Sean is so well-known out west, uh, just like Bro Man. You know, these are like such famous guys. I mean, when your name gets that big, it's like Al Capone. You know, it's like you're definitely going down. I, mean, I don't see how guys in this day and age especially can even stay free when their name gets that, that big. So seven of the distributions occurred in the Austin neighborhood on the west side, and that's a four-corner hustler stronghold big time, uh, while the eighth allegedly took place in uh, in Riverdale in the south suburbs. So prosecutors said that Shaky Sean discussed plans to expand his trafficking operation. So he was, he was, moving, he was moving dope out there, man, uh, specifically into northern Indiana. He didn't know that he was being listened to by the police, but he was. And in May of 2019, he was charged with conspiracy to possess a controlled substance with the intent to deliver. And uh, his co-conspirators, one of them was a lady. Her name was Angela. She's 52. And the other guy's a guy named Maurice. And his street name is Big Fella. Uh, he's also known as Big Ride or uh, another street name they call him as Nas. And he's 54. And uh, each had previously pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute heroin. So uh, one of those guys that got big ride, he's uh, he's scheduled for sentencing on July 14th. So these guys still have a few, couple months to wait before they get sentenced. And uh, Shaky Sean is going to be sentenced in that case on May 26th. So like they said, he's already been sentenced to 10 years in prison uh, for distributing the wholesale quantities of cocaine. And what else he could get on top of that, I don't know, man, but he's already in his 50s, in his mid to late 50s. So he won't be getting out until his mid to late 60s. So, I mean, the question is, and this is an open-ended question. I mean, there's no answer at this point. Is this the end for Shaky Sean, like a, a four-corner hustle prince on the west side? Um, you know, or will he be able to get out? I mean, we've seen some of these mafia guys get out even in their old age and, you know, still go back to it. But uh, hopefully this will be the end for him, man. Hopefully he'll get out and live his life. I don't know if he's got family or what he's got going on, man, but uh, drug deliveries occurred in the 5300 block of West Washington Boulevard. So if you saw my interview with my mom, go check that out on the channel, man. Um, my mom uh, was over at 4245 West Washington. Uh, she was on that same street, but about a mile uh, east of this. Um, so this is like about a mile. She was in Garfield Park. This is in Austin, you know, but on the same street. But between uh, late November and March, agents secretly recorded Shaky Sean. And they say that he's the only guy with the Prince rank right now. So the announcement of the arrest noted that the charges stem from a, quote, multi-year investigation. So federal law enforcement and Chicago police uh, targeted him and the Four Corner Hustlers gang for years. So there are certain gangs they tend to target more than others. 
The Kings is another big one that they target a lot. Um, but he gained a lot of notoriety, Shaky Sean did, in the early 90s when he founded the Body Snatchers faction of the foes. So he was the, like the founder of that faction. In 94, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison on armed violence and aggravated kidnapping convictions. He served eight years in the TAM Supermax State Prison in Southern Illinois. And uh, following the arrest of a, of a, a gang leader named uh, Ray Longstreet in 2004, Shaky Sean, who was scheduled to be paroled from prison in, that October, and a high-ranking gang rival named, uh, named William Thomas, or his street name was Burpee, they were... Uh, obvious contenders for Longstreet's uh, drug empire, they said. So police at the time expressed the view that the Body Snatchers gang fashion was responsible for many of the shootings and murders on the West Side during that period, including arsons, in which innocent people were killed and injured. So Chicago police were so concerned about the potential for violence that in July of 2004, they conducted a preemptive sweep of one of the heroin operations um, and it was a $10,000 a day heroin operation. Okay, so this was making 10 grand per day at this one spot. And that was a, a spot that was ran by that guy, Burpee. Um, so he was arrested. Burpee was arre arrested shortly thereafter when a search warrant at his residence turned up heroin and ammunition. And he was prohibited from possessing the weapon because he was a felon. So law enforcement kept up the pressure on the gang, they said, conducting a dozen or more drug and gang enforcement operations on the west side between 2004 and 2010. And in May of 2008, Shaky Sean was arrested at his apartment on felony marijuana charges. And one of 55 individuals arrested following an 18-month investigation, it was called Operation Capitol Hill. And that involved 22,000 intercepted calls and more than 100 undercover drug buys. So 22,000 intercepted phone calls. And uh, not just in Chicago, but also in Gary, Indiana, uh, which, you know, as you guys know, was just hop, skip, and a jump away that they got him on the wiretap, man. So uh, that was according to the Cook County Chronicle uh, back in 2019 when they when they busted him, man. So they went after the foes really hard. It's going to be a tough temptation to resist, though, man, because they always draw you back in. You know, you've got so many connections and there's so many people that look up to you that when you get out, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of guys that are going to, you know, do that temptation and to cut off people is tough. You know what I'm saying? Um, but hopefully he'll be able to do that, man. But, th but this is, this is a fall of a, of a big figure. They, I mean, in the last year, they've taken down a couple of really big guys for the four corner hustlers. Um, and the four corner hustlers, as far as making money is one of the biggest operations on, on the West side. So, I mean, it's, a uh, you know, I'm not going to compare it to like busting El Chapo, but it's big, you know, locally in Chicago, that's, that's big. Uh, the thing is though, with the drug business, you know, another head always pops up in the type of place, the one that was cut off. So uh, we'll see what happens though, man. And, and it, it leaves, um, it leaves something of a vacuum, you know, over there. So how this will change the dynamics in the streets, I don't know, but, uh, you know, there's plenty of other guys in that organization and it's split now into a lot of different factions too. You got a lot of four corner houses that are beefing with other foes, especially in Austin. That's like a, a kind of like a patchwork of, or a chessboard of, of four corner houses that are like into it with each other, which is weird. That's something I never thought I would see in my lifetime because, uh, the foes, you know, we're always known for having a little bit more structure than the GDs, but the foes, man, I, ne I never thought I would see the day, but, but it's, it's really going on like that with the younger generation over there in Austin, man. And, you know, they always say with Larry Hoover and, and Chief Malik that these guys, you know, if the leaders were free, they could get the younger guys to squash all this stuff and there would be peace and stuff. But I mean, these four corner hustler guys is proof that that's really not the case. You know, I mean, I don't know, maybe Larry Hoover and them got a little bit more power of you know, persuasion or personality than some of these, some of these other guys, but the vice lord leaders, the four corner hustler leaders, they've been out there since Hoover been locked up and they haven't been able to get their own guys to squash beef even within their own gang. Like four corner hustler OGs are free. You know, they're calling shots for whoever's listening to them, but their own, their own gang, like the, the four corner hustlers themselves is still internally beefing. And I mean, bloody, I mean, that, that war in Austin, you know, with the foes, I mean, this, we're talking a bloody war, man. Like the body counts over there are insane, worse than the South side. So, I mean, that right there is, is your answer. I mean, a lot of the, these guys like Bo Deal and them were saying that he doesn't think like the leaders are, are squashing anything and it's like point proven, you know, it's, it's, it's sad, but I mean, 
they're going to have to look for another solution because the leaders ain't it, you know. I mean, it's just right now, that's at least out west, that's the way it's looking. You guys let me know what you think, though, in the comments section. Man, I know it's a very, like, emotional and controversial topic for a lot of people because a lot of people feel very strongly about these gang leaders. And, um, you know, Hoover has dropped his flag. He's taken a, a different direction. Chief Malik, he's on some different stuff now. But uh, I don't know, man. It's it's That that, that question is, is tough and very controversial. Your boy, we didn't see the report. I'm out.